What's up everyone, it's Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com and prepare to see the thinnest device in the world. Yep, thinnest device in the world. This is the Blue Vivo 4. It's actually the second thinnest device in the world because there's a device that came before this which is actually the same device. It's called the Guanine S5.5. It was launched a couple months ago and you know the name S5.5 plays a key role in terms of what this device is because it's only 5.5 millimeters thin. It's pretty darn small and it has a lot of great specs. And in terms of specs, I'm talking flagship specs. We have an octa-core processor, 1.7 gigahertz octa-core processor 2 gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal memory. You can get a 32 gigabyte model. Uh, and it's a device built with Corning uh, Gorilla Glass and metal. It's really a special device. And guess what? It only will cost you $300 off contract. So this is an interesting device. It runs some interesting software. I have my little complaints later on this review. Uh, but it does have some decent flagship specs that really could make other phones like the HTC One, the G3, the S5 really run for their money because this device will only cost you 300 bucks and has four more cores than any of those devices. Now whether that really means a big difference, we'll find out in the full review of the Blue Vivo 4 right here at PhoneDog.com. Let me start off by listing how much this phone costs, which is pretty unusual for me since I really don't list prices because most phones you see at PhoneDog.com are near flagships and they have flagship prices. This phone costs just $299 off contract, so make sure to keep that in mind before discounting this phone because of the things it doesn't have. Let's start right with a design. This is the highest quality blue phone I've ever touched. It uses a mix of Corning Gorilla Glass and metal to build the frame of the body of this phone. The glass on the back has a nice cold touch feeling and the metal sides offer enough grip to use this device one handed. Now this phone is thin, the thinnest phone I've ever used actually. At 5.5 millimeters, it's pretty crazy. And really for the first time you're gonna put this in your hands, you do have a moment of disbelief and I'm really not kidding. This is thinner than the Apple iPod Touch, not iPhone, the iPod Touch by a full 0.6 millimeters. The only exception is the slightly raised surface surrounding the camera, which looks kind of cool in this glossy black and matte black color finish. The only thing I don't like about this design is the buttons are pretty weird. They all live on the left side and the volume rocker lives above the power and lock switch. Not that big of a deal, but just really weird. Now the hardware that lives inside this phone screams flagship. A 1.7 gigahertz, wait for it, octa-core processor. So it's two 1.7 gigahertz quad-core chips fused together, two gigabytes of RAM and a smaller 2300 milliamp hour battery. Add a 13 megapixel rear facing camera and a 5 megapixel front facing camera and you have a very complete flagship package. Any drawbacks? Well, it only supports HSPA Plus network speeds, so up to 42 megabits per second on some of the faster 3G networks supported on AT&T and T-Mobile. Sorry for all of you CDMA users. Now obviously it can support 3G and slower speeds, but there is no LTE radio inside and that will probably be the biggest drawback of this device. Apart from that, the only other drawback is the software, which there is a workaround and the battery life. Next, let's dive into this display. Blue uses a Super AMOLED panel full of 1920 by 1080 pixels that rakes in 441 pixels per inch and some very deep color depth. It's not as vibrant as something like the Samsung Galaxy S5, just something about the pop factor from the Samsung Galaxy S5 is pretty much unmatched from any other Super AMOLED panel. Software wise, you'll find Android 4.2 Jelly Bean with Blue's custom and very heavily skinned user interface. I'm not a fan of this at all. I like the interface on the Blue Vivo 4.8 HD much better than this one and also the same software that was found on the Blue Life Pure. My workaround has been this, Nova Launcher, something I'm sure tons of you have knowledge of if you're an Android user. So instead of having all the apps on a home screen based launcher, this converts any of your Android phones to a more Google-like experience. The stock software is fine, but it's extremely, extremely limited. You really have no home screen space and you can barely have any widgets. 
I'm not sure why Blue uses different launchers for different product lines. The Vivo 4.8 was fine. This and the Blue Life Pure have just really limiting software. Now, even though this phone isn't stock, this phone runs pretty darn smooth with Nova Launcher, which is free on the Play Store, by the way. I've made it pretty close to a vanilla experience, and this phone reacts pretty darn well. There are a few trouble spots when you're navigating through the menus. Not sure if it's a hardware thing because the same thing happens on the stock software. I'm also not a huge fan of the preloaded bloatware that you cannot, and I say it again, you cannot uninstall. It's not overdone like some of the Korean phones like the G3 I had, but it's more than I like, which is zero. I don't want any bloatware. Now let's move on to this performance. Performance is actually pretty good. Loading bigger and more content-rich websites like The Verge and PhoneDog will open pretty smoothly and the scrolling seems pretty fluid. Launching apps like Temple Run seems on par, multitasking seems just fine, and the GPU performance of this guy is pretty quick. The only part where this device is not on par is the battery life. The battery is only rated at 2300 milliamps, around the same size as the original HTC One, yet it's powering a larger 5 inch display. Battery life lasts around 7 to 9 hours at best. It's pretty standard these days, but with phones like the S5, the M8, and the G3 lasting 14, 15, or even 16 hours of full-on usage, it seems a little on the downside. But compared to a smaller handset like, say, an iPhone, and you'll probably be pleasantly surprised by the battery life. Now, camera-wise, a 13-megapixel shooter on the back is just fine. Not the best by any means, but you have to remember, this is a budget device. So the sensor is pretty much last generation, and the software is really lacking. But if you want a different camera application, just go download the Google camera application from the Play Store. So to wrap up this review, the Blue Vivo 4 is probably the best Blue device available. Only trouble is, it's not LTE compatible, and its stock software is... Um unfinished. You can solve this software issue with launchers, but you cannot solve the problem with LTE. So if you can live with HSPA Plus and the $300 off contract price, this may be one of the sweetest devices available for the money. And hey, you can go shout to the world how you have the thinnest smartphone in the world. So thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any comments below. You can send questions directly to me on Twitter at PhoneDog underscore Marco. Again, my name is Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.